You know, I actually had a great time with a couple of people this morning and I wanted to read some things I wrote down about that time. So there's a way out of the hell of condemning other people and condemning ourselves. Because again, you who is without sin cast the first stone, it's deep. And the measure that you judge other people with is going to be measured to you by Jesus Christ. So those are deep things. And I've also been doing some videos that kind of have to do with this also about weight loss, because I think not dealing with the issues of life that come from the heart can make you kind of start dealing with your problems with food. And that just is a life of bondage. And Jesus came to set us free, right? He wants to free us from condemnation. But if we don't own the condemnation of obeying the wrong spirit, we won't get free. There's a, you know, it says in the Bible that Zion is saved through judgment. We have to make judgments. Examine yourself. That's making a judgment, right? So we don't get sick, we can go to sleep. So there's great life in being a Holy Spirit-led person. And that's exactly why Satan himself wants to blind our minds, self-willed, and so we'll stay confused, never taking our place in his kingdom, the Father's kingdom. The Bible says don't make a place for the devil. And when we do evangelize to others to make a place for the devil too, so in any, the only the bar we set for ourselves is the bar we're going to set for others. So if we don't come over overcome very well and we're drunks, whether it be food, drink, porn, whatever, we'll start excusing other people too instead of helping them out of a ditch. So in, in many ways, God's government and kingdom, right along with Satan's, is like a multi-level marketing program. Through one man's sin, we all got kicked out of the garden. And through one man's sin, Jesus Christ, who obeyed the Father, many were made righteous. So what man spirit will we be of? You know, the man who got everybody kicked out or the one who's righteous? Again, Jesus never meant for us to live a condemned life. And we do that because we won't name the spirit and we lie to ourselves about whatever spirit we're of, searching the spirit of, and not realizing that God is the searcher, searching searching us. So we live in the congregation of the dead with no understanding when we lie and hide, right? When I make judgments about feeling condemnation and I ask Jesus for understanding, then I have the potential to walk in wisdom and escape the devil. There's no escape for people that only play catch me if you can and don't examine themselves and name the spirit that they're of that's not right. That's why a lot of people don't have a testimony either. They don't understand the rulers, the princes, the powers of darkness because they don't name them and they don't can't resist them or rebuke them either. Lucifer was a beautiful morning star. Lucifer became so impressed with his own beauty, intelligence, and power and position that he began to desire for himself the honor and glory that belongs to God alone. This pride represents the actual beginning of sin in the universe, preceding the fall of human Adam in time and space. Lucifer only has one plan for our life to make us live in spiritual poverty. He wants submission and he wants us to make a place for him the more we're led by god's holy spirit and we have life we fight for the life of the spirit in jesus christ because we don't want to live in fear and condemnation anymore our love changes oh how long you fools will you love foolishness delight and scorning and hate knowledge that is the door satan gets welcomed into our life by loving the wrong thing once you name the spirit, you can repent for making a place for it and not resisting it and take God's medicine and have faith in Jesus Christ and not reject the present, the gift of Jesus Christ left us to make us wealthy, spiritually speaking, his spirit. Only the humble get raised out of condemnation, pride, catch me if you can, never make anyone anything but spiritually poor. And Satan steals the gift of God in our souls when we do that. That's why, again, naming the spirit is a good thing and not being careless. 
apprehending what we've been apprehended for. He, the Father, loved us so much that he sent his Son, who sent his Spirit. How much and how we live before God in the secrets of our heart is everything. Because we get rewarded openly. And again, that's why some people are fat and just overcome by demons. Because what they're doing secretly are anorexic and, you know, or whatever. Sometimes you can't see it, though, in people's flesh. So I want to make an exception there. If we're unwilling to protect our own good spirit, we'll sell it for a bowl of beans over and over again. Give away our inheritance, a Holy Spirit-led life for a demonic spirit-led life. I had a great chat with this friend who struggles with remaining in the congregation of the dead with no understanding. It's a proverb. I said, if you really knew you had all authority to cast out devils, the king and the government of the king, kingdom of heaven was standing behind you, you wouldn't let bullies talk you into going into the alley and getting beat up every day. So you wouldn't love them nor obey them and drag you into the alley to, be, again, beat the dung, the dung out of you. You wouldn't let them steal your inheritance. I said, it's kind of like Ivanka Trump spending her life in the schoolyard with the bullies, dying on junk food, when she could have eaten the finest of dainties at the table of heaven. Because they talked her into, talked her out of her palace every day and to roll in the gutter, right? So... What if she had all authority all along to rebuke them and put them in jail? The Holy Spirit is like our personal bodyguard. If we grieve and deny and resist him, he can't protect us. That's why we have to stop lying to ourselves when we grieve and deny and resist the Holy Ghost and get some help from on high and other people. So if I can talk you into believing it's really hard to wash your hands and dry them, will you go wash your hands and dry them? Nah, you won't do it if I can talk you in. To thinking it's way too hard if you actually believe it's if you actually believe that it's an exercise in futility and i talk you into it you're not going to do it but the bible says cleanse your hands you sinners purify your heart you're double-minded maybe it's really easy to do and you've been deceived if you think it's way too hard to name the bully and tell your father sorry for playing with him and get truth to rebuke him with like Jesus did, you'll never do it. That is the wiles of the devil to steal our very life away in a spirit-led life with the wrong spirit rather than a Holy Spirit-led life. Whatever lie can get you to swallow is the lie you'll be captive of, right? So Jesus sent his word to heal us and deliver us from our destructions. But if we believe it's too hard, we're just going to live sick and destructive, right? Yeah, that's right. So we are, in a sense, like Ivanka Trump, the king's daughter. I could use Prince William or Harry here also, for England's a government, a type and shadow of God's government. They both had a role to play out, Harry and William. But they also have a choice to do their own thing instead. It doesn't change the fact that they're sons of a king, called to be glorious in a kingdom, they can rebel against exercising the authority that could be theirs. Keep, a, keep the bad guys out, right? Psalm 45 says this, the king's daughter is glorious within. She doesn't obey the spirit of her father's house, familiar spirits, because we can stay humble to the king and be forgiven. Like any time, tell the truth about going into the alley and playing with bullies. If... A king's daughter sneaks out at night and all of her bruises are hidden and she can't and won't talk. It's very, very hard to get free. They consent with a thief. They know who he is and they won't name him. They won't say anything, the proverb says. They might want to go play with him again, right? You see this divided heart in Hosea's wife. She actually got it one day and she told her lovers that she was leaving Hosea for that left her desolate, afraid, paranoid, fearful, bitter, and empty. Her eyes got open. She did what we can do. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Her love got pointed in the right place. That's why loving pride, lying, hiding, is it makes you unhelpable by God and others. And that's why God hates it. 
in the word, in the end, we choose to be led by the Holy Spirit or the leading of other spirits. It's all about love. Men love, Jesus said, darkness. They don't care if God will sign off on their deeds or not. So what is a king? It's, it's a kingdom of citizens, right? An earthly kingdom is a territory or a domain governed by a king or queen. He has absolute authority and influence over people and he, and has a responsibility to his subjects for their to their well-being. His dominion and authority are absolute. Every kingdom must have a, must have a king. But it's also true that every king is automatically a lord, a lord to his subjects. So the definition of a king is a male sovereign, one that is a supreme and preeminent in a particular group, category, or sphere, a man chosen as a winner of a contest or an honorary head of an event. That's a dictionary definition there. The battle rages between two sovereigns. They both have an inheritance laid up for us. We choose this day which one we value, and all authority has been and all authority that those kings have has been given to us. Jesus and Satan, we decide which one we're going to take on. God himself allowed Lucifer to test the hearts of men. Love is love forced isn't love at all. We will love one ruler or hate the other one, Jesus said. What king doesn't want to be loved freely, not forcing his people to love him? Yeah, there's evil governments want to force people to love them and obey them, right? Only the good king of heaven, who only has the kingdom's welfare in his mind and heart, has subjects and children in his heart all the time. He's the one that's worthy to be praised. When the righteous king sits in authority, the people rejoice. When the wicked bear the rule, the people mourn. Again, choose this day who's worthy of serving, who's worthy of your adoration. Many are called to be enlisted, but few actually obey voluntarily. We have to sign up voluntarily for the good kingdom and the good king. And we are only subjects of his kingdom when we hear his voice and obey it. Those who hear and obey the king of glory's voice, Jesus, and listen to his spirit, their blind eyes see more and more. And there's a scripture about that too that says, after you've done the will of God, You'll inherit the promise. You'll start seeing with new eyes. So we're in a war of the worlds. We're in a war of words between two kingdoms, two kings. And who is really worthy of our allegiance to obey? And they will give their life one way or another. But I'm talking about Jesus now. When you get who he is, you'll give your life fighting for his kingdom because you love him so much. Those who have been forgiven much, love much. Be sure to look up the keys of the kingdom in the Bible. They are yours if you want them. It's in 1 Peter or 2 Peter. It talks about the keys to the kingdom. They're right there in the Bible and they can be yours. Amen.